Hey, system coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and I am back in Turkey. Some of you guys might not know, but my origins are obviously from Turkey. I do live in Germany. I was born in Germany, but my family is originally from Turkey, and I used to support this team, Fenerbahce. That's the team that we're going to be taking on today in this rebuild, and I'm extremely excited because I can't remember that I have done a Turkey career mode ever. So for that, this is a very special occasion. If you guys are going to be enjoying this after I explain you the concept, make sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below telling me about some of the parts that you enjoyed in this video or suggestions for the next rebuild and follow your boy on Instagram because as you're watching this, I might be in Iceland trekking up the mountains so follow me on instagram because i'll be i am posting stories there every single day so i'm excited about that one as well but let me explain to you this right here this rebuild that we are doing it's not just the rebuild of fener a team that has struggled to win the league title for years upon years and has fallen behind the likes of gala who now have four stars as far as i can remember in turkey you need to have five league titles to get one star so gala have at least 20 fener is still in between that 15 to 20 range let's get them that title multiple titles and push them to the top in european football that is going to be the, the thing that we try and do and we have a spin the wheel action coming in into this one now guys we have the spin the wheel app here we have all the countries in the world and we have so FIFA set up as well. That's the page that we most of the time use to go ahead and bring in transfers or look for transfers on stream. So the so FIFA app will be coming to use after we have spun the wheel here. So this is going to be an example. Each year at the beginning of the season, we will spin the wheel. If that nation that comes up has players, 10 players above the 80 potential, we will check that on so FIFA. It is eligible for that season. And that season, we're only allowed to sign players from that nation that we get here randomly. So, this could be it. Who is going to be the first nation? Which, which nation is going to be the first that we're going to be using here for this rebuild? Let's spin that thing. Come on. I beg you, first season will consist of... What is that? Italy! Oh, baby, let's go. Italy is huge. That is a really good one. We don't even need to check on so FIFA. We know exactly that Italy is going to be perfect for season one. That is the nation that we restrict ourselves to. Let's take a look at the team. Let's take a look at the budget and let's get started. Eight million euros in the preseason tournament. And of course, we have done the transfers. Some of the new players coming into this team I know are Diego Rossi right here or Diogo Rossi, whatever his name is. I think he's from Uruguay, I believe. Yes, he used to play for the LA team. Now he is here. Kim Min Jae has come in as a center back into the squad to play alongside Salai. Aziz is a little bit older. Berisha has come into the squad as well as a potential striker option for us. He's 22 years old, so he could have a huge impact on this team, of course. And then I think we have Kaduolu, who is very talented. I want to give him as much playtime as possible. I have a huge Fener fan in my chat right now who is going to be helping me out along with this career mode. That is for sure. And Meyer has come in as well into the squad, which is quite an interesting transfer Maximilian Meyer back in the day used to uh, join Crystal Palace, I remember. And uh, some people thought maybe this is the time where he's going to finally step up his game, but it never really worked out for him. And now he's in Turkey. Most of the time when this happens, when you once go to Turkey, you struggle to get above that level ever again. So that's going to be an interesting one. Uh, Valencia has done all right for Fener so far for this season, from what I've seen in the Europa League qualifiers, I believe it was. He scored like a hat trick or something. So Berisha here. It will be uh, an interesting one. And uh, Pelkas right here. My, my Fener fan in the chat just said, we will, I won't say the name, uh, the word that he said, people for Pelkas, by the way. I don't know what that means, but I guess we have to play him. <laughs> I'm not too sure. We have Sosa here. He used to be a former uh, Trabzon player and former AC Milan player. So he is here. 
Uh, both of these guys are going to switch position. Luis Gustavo, you guys probably know, but he's 32 years old. So we will have to fight with age. We also have Ozil here down the right hand side with his 64 pace. That is going to be an interesting player to have. Uh, for sure, what I'm going to do right now immediately is going to put as many players onto the transfer list as I can. Pelkas, he says, we love him so much. Okay, so Pelkas might be an interesting one for us. I definitely have to put all the oldies onto the transfer list. Italy is such a good nation that we just have to use this to our advantage. So Sosa goes onto the transfer list. We have Luis Gustavo going onto the transfer list. Ozil just into this team, 31 years old. It's not going to cut it. I have to get the cash into the squad. Tick in here as a goalkeeper. We can put him onto the list as well. Novak is a decent left back, but he's going to go on there as well. I need to use this opportunity to buy as many good Italian talents into the squad as I can. That's the whole point of a rebuild, completely changing up the team and making it unrecognizable if possible. And uh, that is exactly what I'm going to try and do. Everyone above the age of 29 has been put onto the transfer list and we'll see what happens right there. But the budget initially is 26 million. How do I call them? That means... Let's see how this goes, basically. Let's get it on. Here begins the transfer madness. In our transfer history, now you guys will be able to tell that we have sold a couple of players already. Two players specifically have been sold, and we are still selling some others as well, specifically Luis Gustavo we're trying to get rid of. Now, looking at this team, as we have it at the moment, uh, I am actually pretty happy with it, but the 30-plus-year-olds need to go. So we need a new left back and a new center midfielder and possibly a new right back. We do have a good budget. I need to spend big this season. I can't save it up because next season we might get someone like a really small nation that barely has any talents that could fit into this team. So we got really lucky there with Italy initially. So we're going to go straight after some big boy transfers to improve this team for the future. Two positions we're going for. Spinazzola left back because of his incredible performances for Italy. And we want to get Sensi into the team as well. That is the midfield transfer for us to replace the main man, Sosa. And hopefully we can get these deals over the line. I'll see you in a sec. So the new players have come in. I should actually show you how much we had to pay for them. It was a big amount, sadly. But we have brought in Sensi for 31 million, as you can see right here. Uh, we have sold Zeich. We have sold Zanka. We have sold Turic, Luis Gustavo. And we have brought in Spinozola, the Euros hero that sadly got injured for a long time now for this uh, real life season. He is coming in at around the same price So both players above 30 million, which is an insane amount of money when you consider that this is happening in Turkey. But we have made it happen through the sales that I've shown you just now. And hopefully soon enough, we can let go of the likes of Sosa and also Novak in the transfer window. We're training uh, Spinazzola to become a left wing back. So that way he will actually be higher rated, 80 rated, I guess. And uh, then the rest of the team is looking very good at the moment as well. Very happy with these signings. Sensi is going to dominate that midfield, be a box-to-box -box type player for us. And then Spinazzola is going to bomb down that left-hand side alongside Rossi and be the big danger for our opponents. One of our biggest talents, or the biggest talent in the squad, is going to be loaned out to PSV Eindhoven. We hope to see him come back next season and take over from Max Meyer. For centre-back on transfer deadline day, we're going to be trying to sign ourselves Mancini. Let's hope it works out. He has the leadership trait, which would be kind of good for this team as well. We can make him the captain. Hopefully that helps us. You should have good chemistry with Spinazzola. Uh, for the squad, two Italians next to each other would be a good shout. The Mancini deal is through. 24-year-old comes in for 21.5 uh, million at the end. We tried swap deals. All of that didn't happen. We still have the oldies in the team. Despite Salai being talented, uh, Kim Min Jae is higher rated at the moment. So we will have it set up like this. We will have this bench, which I'm actually quite happy with. Uh, I do have faith in this bench. I think these guys can do some bits for us. It's a very well-balanced bench. We have two centre-backs, one for the uh, full-back position. We have a centre midfielder, right midfielder, Cam and striker. Uh, at the moment, it seems like Valencia is playing most of the games. We need Berisha to go up in his stats so he can actually take over at that striker position and play by himself. Ozil is surviving for one more season in this team, but the Italian nation has come in and kicked in immediately into the squad and taken over in many positions. So hopefully next season, 
we can have another very good nation coming up. Uh, but right now, our wages are looking terrible. So let's get this season going. And uh, let's try and achieve some big things. Hopefully, Champions League football qualification. That'd be absolutely amazing. Season roundup, basically, right? Oh, wow. We started off so well, but we are now in the second position uh, right behind Gala. We apparently lost against them, which is obviously a huge rivalry. When you guys know, don't know Turkish football, Gala, Fener, Besiktas, all three being from Istanbul, they have huge rivalries. Besiktas, though, 11th at the moment. That is absolutely horrific. They should be up there. But Fener and Gala battling for that first spot at the moment uh, with the exact same record. They just have a better goal difference. Now, Özil has actually gone up to an 81, surprisingly enough. Spinazzola up to an 82. Mancini already up to a 79. Kim Minja has gone up by plus one. Bayunder, I believe, has gone up as well. Sensi up to an 80. Kavaji has gotten a plus two. Meyer is looking good. Berisha is looking good. He's now finally playing the games ahead of Valencia. Now that he's 75 rated. So overall, I'm very satisfied with how things are looking. But I would hope that we win the title if possible. Uh, Rossi has the nine goals and two assists. Berisha, even though he has started playing later on, has eight goals already in 15 games. That's huge. Özil has four assists and five uh, goals himself. Tisserand has played 21 games. Is he playing ahead of Kim Min? Oh, man. Why is he taking this young man's shine away, man? Why is he doing that? I might have to sell him. I, I don't know. But that's really bothering me now. Because this man should be playing in our team. And he's just not getting the playtime because of this dude. Why? He has more pace, more defending, more physicality. How does that make sense? Maybe he was injured? I hope that's the reason. But anyways, first half, solid. The season is coming to an end, and I feel like we have a lot of unhappy players. The reason why is we had no money left in the squad, guys. The Italians basically took all of our money. The, the transfers that we made were huge. But here we are, end of the season, and we are in the final of the Turkish Cup against Gala, which is a huge matchup. But we have won the league. Let's go. Bro, what the hell? Look at that. We have the same goal difference. 97 points on both teams. They beat us once. We beat them once. That is incredible. I can't remember the last time I had a photo finish like that one. But that's amazing to see. Now, when it comes to the team itself, again, as I mentioned, we might have a couple of players that are a bit unhappy with their contracts. Luckily, no thumbs down though yet. So that's a good sign. Kadolo has grown a little bit away from home. In the starting lineup, we have Berisha from 74 to 78. That's really good. Rossi up to an 84. Incredible growth on him. Spinazzola has gone up nicely. Mancini has gone up very nicely. Kim Min Jae now playing in the starting lineup, and it shows Sensi with the 82. We have made the right transfers. When it comes to the Italians, they have improved this team for sure. Bayunder up to the 80. It's quite clutch, and the bench is looking all right as well. We have some really good options there. Salai getting a plus two this season. Osai Samuel, again, let me show you guys why these guys have grown so much. If you don't know yet, when you have, for example, let's go to one of the lads that has grown the most. Uh, let's go to Sangare, for example. He's a right back that is 26 years old. The way you grow them is you train them to become a left back. So when they play on the right hand side, you train them for the same position on the other side of the pitch and you don't change their position and they fly up in rating. It's a very good way to get your players boosted up. And Rossi has gone from 76 to 84. He got a plus eight. Oh my God, bro. That is incredible. Wow. I can't, I, I can't remember the last time or if I ever had anyone grow plus eight. That's something I can't remember at all. That must be new. So the first season is a massive victory for our team. Qualified for Champions League. Big money coming in. Let's see what the second nation is going to be for season two. I am already excited. Can't wait to see if it's going to be a good one, or if we get very unlucky on this one. Let's not forget about this, by the way. Can we get the double? Can we get the double? Please. Please. Yes! 
get in Rossi. Uh, Rossi, by the way, we have a big issue. I can't extend this contract at the moment. Uh, it's a massive problem that we have. And he has grown plus eight. So you can imagine that he is worth a lot more. He is worth 48.5 as a release cost at 85.9. This could be dangerous territory. We desperately need to give him a new contract next season, which I can't do right now. I wish I could, but I have no money left in the budget. So we'll have to wait until season two. In the second season, as you guys can see here, it still says Italy. Who are we going to get this time? Can we get just as lucky or not? The spin is kicking in, please. It has to be a nation that has at least 10 players above 80 potential. It's going to be Ethiopia. I don't think that works out. Okay, Ethiopia literally have one player. So <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. Next spin. Come on, please. Please be a good one. Be a good one. What is it? I can't see it. It's not a good one. I don't even need to type that in. That's not going to work out. Third spin. Please give me something to work with. Colombia? Colombia. Yes. Okay. I, I think I can work with that. Second season is Colombia, boys. Okay. Let me think. 10 million in the preseason tournament and 22 million in the budget. Okay, it's not ideal. Now, here's one of the issues that we are having in this team right now. Both of our right midfielders are taking time away from each other. Now, Ozil is obviously going to be on the transfer list still. Hopefully, we can get rid of him if possible. Kaveji, I don't know if he still has a lot of groom to grow. Oof, it's not much. It might just be one more rating. But for now, he's one of the higher rated players in the team. So we're going to keep him. Sangare, I highly doubt that he can go up even more. Can he? He will. Wow. He is absolutely on fire. That's incredible. Um, but this is the position that we're worried about. Maya, will you still go up? Okay, eight weeks for him. And then Osai Samuel, who is younger on the same rating one week max it's time to go and you know what it's not a bad thing for us as well because he will be worth some money yes he's worth 15 million in the team we have insane values oh let's not forget about this bad boy <laughs> before i forget rossi no release cause so we just saved him there that's good we do have a bunch of players with really good value in the squad Kaveji, if they want to pay me 48 million, uh, I'm not happy with it. I'm not happy with 48. 66? Yes. 66, I'll be fine with. But yeah, that is how we begin into the season. Oh my God. Berisha could have left for less than he was worth. Thank God we checked the release clauses. Oh my Lord, I could have missed out on a bunch of players for very little money. Thank God we have done that, boys. GG's. A little change of plans. Maya is becoming a center attacking midfielder. Now, you might be asking yourself, why are you doing this? Here's the reason why. Um, in the starting lineup, you can see it here. Kadolo will not be playing there. Obviously, it's going to be Osai Samuel. Uh, Kadolo came back from loan, but this is the setup that we have going into the season. It's a very good setup for the Turkish League, for sure, but it's nowhere near good enough to compete for the Champions League, which is obviously the ultimate goal for us. And obviously, we can only sign Colombians this season, and we have a couple of players in mind, but we have sold a bunch of players, which hopefully will facilitate a decent amount of money for us to go with. Uh, Özil has left for 33.4 million to Benfica, Novak has gone for 13.3. Sosa has gone for 1.25. So we have made three transfers uh, that hopefully will be good enough for us to go and spend big. Now, 71 million is a huge, huge amount of money. And we got to be spending it the right way. There's only a couple of Colombian players that would actually fit into this team. So let's see which ones those are. We have a couple of options when it comes to the Colombians. We have Luis Diaz. We have Ospina as a backup goalkeeper, which we need. I do desperately need him. So he is for sure coming into the team. Then we have Davinson Sanchez and Luis Suarez as well. I don't exactly know which ones of these are going to come in. We're going to, I'm going to go for them right now, starting with Ospina and then moving our way up to Diaz. And then the decision will have to be made between Sanchez and Suarez Let's see what happens. Let me show you this right here, boys. We have gotten ourselves Ospina for 8.4 million. Davinson Sanchez, a massive upgrade to our defense is coming in. The former Spurs man comes in for Kim Min-Jae, who left our team. 
plus 17 million. I felt like that was a really good deal. Then we went for a backup right back as one of the last transfers that we actually made. The other one you're going to see in a second. But he has come in into our team. It is Munoz who is going to be helping us defensively if we do need him as a backup rotation player for our squad. And we have gone for the big boy transfer in Luis Suarez for the striker position. Those are the decisions that we have made for the Colombian nation, which leaves us with this squad right here. So when we go down here, we can put Munoz in there and uh, Ospina is obviously going to be a good backup. I am actually pretty excited about what we have going on here. I have a good feeling about this season. Once again, when it comes to the league, I have a very good feeling. Berisha is a great backup. Pelkas is good enough for the camp position. Yandash as well. Kadolu can play down the wings. We have a right back and a good center back as well. So overall, and a goalkeeper as well. Let's get this, man. This team is going to go above 80 in every single position this season. And from that point on, it's only up. Halfway through season two. Look at this now. We are actually getting draws against Manchester City-like teams. That is unbelievable. Benfica beaten, Basel beaten. And then we have beaten Basel again, but we had lost against Benfica and drawn against uh, Manchester City again with the same result. Now, in the league, due to our team being as insane as it is, we are dominating with zero losses. I would love to have an invincible season in here. That'd be amazing for us to achieve. Uh, the other teams are really, really struggling. And the further we get into the future, a lot of them are going to struggle even more. Now... Our squad is looking like this. Suarez has gone up by plus two. Meyer only a plus one. Cavage is same for him. Rossi from an 84 to an 87. That's pretty good. Sensi only a plus one. Osai plus one as well. Sangare is having some amazing growth. I'll have to admit. Sanchez, 83 rated. Mancini is at that 82. And I, I think he's stuck if I'm not mistaken. But next season will be better. Spinazzola, the main man himself. 28 years old, 85 rated. Love that. Bayunder has gone up. Berisha, 81 rated. I think he's playing the most games. No, both players have like 80 plus sharpness. So both of them are playing, I'm assuming. Um, Yandash is doing all right here. He has some really good match sharpness as well. Probably getting subbed in for Meyer a lot. Pelkas, not so much. Kaduolu, not getting a lot of play time. 49 sharpness is a good way to, to be able to tell. Munoz is looking solid as a backup right now. He has grown a lot. Salai is looking good. And then we have these lads that we're st still trying to sell. Valencia and Ademi. But individually, halfway through this season, we should be seeing a lot of goals here. And we are seeing it, but it's not on Suarez. Surprisingly enough, Berisha has actually completely taken over. 15 and 4. Did not expect that, you know. He's a crucial first. No, they're both important first team players. Hey, whoever gets it done stays, right? So we'll see what happens. If Berisha keeps on going up and has more potential next year, I don't mind selling Suarez. I have no issues with that. We're going to make profit on him anyways because he came in below value, I believe. And now he's worth 52 million. So I'm totally fine with that. If Berisha wants to be the main man, he can be the main man. So the chat and uh, I have just decided, guys, we're going to let go of Max Meyer. The reason why is because both the strikers that we have are doing well. And we just had the suggestion to, twish, to switch the formation to a 4-4-2, which actually sounded like a great idea. So Meyer is going to leave for 22 million. If I can sell Ademi, I will do the same. Uh, but I think we are dr about to drop down to the bare minimum of amount of players. So hopefully, hopefully we can still do that. Um, but yeah, Valencia can come back up here as a backup player for the attacking positions. And then Meyer is going to leave the squad. Uh, just to make sure that this deal actually happens, I will go ahead and um, look for a Colombian free agent. If I can find one, I will go ahead and sign him because I do need possibly some more players to be able to um, make some further deals happen. So I am going to be signing someone in this list Possibly Jose Izquierdo. There you go. Would be a good backup to have, I assume. Season has come to an end. And as you guys can see, we are not in the Champions League final. We have lost it in the quarterfinals or round of 16. I can't quite remember against Bayern Munich there. And we didn't go invincible. We have lost two games in the second half of the season, which is a big L. Uh, we also have the Turkish Cup final still coming up. So that's good. 
But the boys up top are now playing alongside each other. And Suarez has beaten Berisha in terms of growth massively here. There, That's a plus two over him now. Rossi with the 88. That's a plus four for him. Osaya with a plus two this season. Sensi hasn't really gone up too much. Kaveji 81. Spinazzola has been enjoying himself in that left wing back spot, obviously. Uh, forgot to change that position after we switched to the 4 4 2. Mancini 83, Sanchez 84, Sangare 81, Bayandur is up to that 83 as well. On the bench, Munoz has had the most movement alongside Salai. So the backups are coming along nicely. So very, very well done from our team. I'm very happy with how things have gone in that sense. But the cup still needs to be won. And we still have 32 million to spend. I don't know where that cash came from. Um, but no one in the starting lineup is left. So that's okay. I guess that's from the Meyer sale. Yeah, that's from the Meyer sale. So let's go to the final of this cup and let's see if we can win this one as well. Season two ending with a big dub. I would take that. We have won the league, by the way. I will show you guys in a second again. We have won the league. So quick sim in this. Get it done, Berisha. Get it done, Suarez. Kaveji and Rossi have scored, not the two strikers. That's interesting to see, but happy with that one another double has been won and the top scorer was Rossi 24 and 12 Kaviji 22 and 21 oh boy this guy is going up next year that is for sure he is definitely going up but here's the big question wow bro four players with more than 20 goals that's incredible I am excited now to see which nation we're going to be getting, boys? This is uh, going to be an interesting one. Italy, Colombia, and now, let's see. Spinning the wheel one more time. Italy, Colombia, and now, who is it going to be for season three? Come on, be a good one, be a good one. What's it going to be? I can't tell. Is that Denmark? What is it? Okay, Turkmenistan. Again, I don't even think I need to show you guys. They don't have enough high potential players. Oh, not high potential, but like... A bare minimum of 80. Uh, it's not going to be available to us, sadly. We move to the next one. What's it going to be? Syria. They don't have... They barely have any players in the game. I, I have to admit, boys, we have to have a little bit more players in the game. Give me a good nation. Netherlands. No. Zimbabwe. No. <laughs> Come on. Can I have something that I can actually use? I beg. Oh, it's actually... It's Netherlands. There we go. There it is, boys. We did it. Netherlands. So it's Italy, Colombia, Netherlands. Ooh, this season is about to go crazy. 10 million preseason tournaments. All right. That is not going to be our main focus. Our main focus is this. 58 million to spend. Very, very good amount of money. Netherlands obviously offering a lot of opportunities for upgrades. We just got to determine which positions those are going to be coming in. Now, I am happy with Spinozola. Despite him being 29, he can still go to like 33 years old without losing his rating. So I'm not too scared about that one. I am more concerned about the likes of Sensi, who has kind of been stuck. So I'm happy that he's going to grow this season. That's huge to see. Kaveji has had an insane year last time around. And now he's going to go up again. I don't know if that's going to be enough for me to keep him, though. I got to be completely honest with you guys. Suarez, I'm happy with. Bayundra, I'm happy with. Kaveji, I'll think about it. Berisha, how about you, my man? Okay, 10 weeks is fine. 10 weeks is fine. Sangare, 28 years old. How's it going? He's looking good. He's looking good. This is one of my main concerns. Osai Samuel. Okay. He's going to be done soon. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do here. Even the man on the bench as a backup goalkeeper has gone up in his rating. And I don't know how that happened. We will have to figure something out. We just got to be ruthless. We just got to be ruthless and make the moves. The main player that we have here as these options, guys, is Bergwin. We're going to try and get him. If that deal doesn't happen because he's worth a lot of money, we will go for Stengs or Gakpo. Let's see which one we actually got into the squad. So here it is, guys. We have signed him for only 27.5 million. And Osai Samuel had to go the other way in this deal. 
Now we actually have two former Spurs players in our team, which I didn't realize, but Sanchez and Bagvin have been reunited. What are the chances of that? If you consider that we spun the wheel for this to happen, uh, Bergvin, obviously, or Bergvin, however you want to pronounce it. I, I don't quite know, actually. Probably Bergvin. Um, he is coming in with amazing stats. And uh, we're going to train him to become a right midfielder. And then we're going to train him to become a left midfielder, but not actually make him a left midfielder, if you understand what I mean. We're going to get him up in rating. I'm excited about his signing for this squad. And we still, still have $35 million to spend. So I'm thinking right now... We got to either improve the bench and bring in a center midfielder for sure, right? Or we bring in a better center midfielder and drop Kaviji to the bench. So let's see if we can make that happen. I don't think we can bring in a better one though because Kaviji is 82 rated. He is very high valued. So it's probably going to be ending up to be a backup. Let's see who it is. So here we are now and we have brought in Sant Juiced as a backup for our center back position. <coughs> we have let Salai go out on loan. And we have also gone ahead and brought in Harawi. He is now our center midfield backup. I think this season our team is looking very, very strong moving forward. Apart from maybe the backup striker position at this stage. But we do not have any money left. So we're going to have to focus on this squad getting it done. And I'm pretty confident that, that there is another double or double I should say. Uh, on the horizon for this squad it's just a question of like how far can they make it in europe it's a new day but it is the same career mode still january 2023 halfway through season three lads and if you take a look at our team you can see rossi 91 rated absolutely unreal and uh, spinazola gone up to an 89 as well at the age of 29 that is amazing to see uh, hopefully he can still keep on going up until he's like 33 years old. That is normally around the age where they start going down. But it could start around 32 as well. We never know. Kaviji has gone up to an 84, so it's okay. Berisha is at the same rating. We have some players below that rating. Sangare, for example, is kind of stuck there. But our team is dominating in the league. Bagvan coming in, doing well there. I'm happy with that. But let's go into the squad hub and let me show you guys one thing. The top scorers are currently Rossi and Suarez. Bergwijn is doing well. Uh, Berisha has done all right. But it is Kaviji that seems very, very impressive so far this season alongside Spinazzola. So GG's to them. Um, another thing that I have to sadly mention is that we have been kicked out of the Champions League in a very, very tough group. We had Inter and Dortmund there and we failed with eight points. And it is going to be like that very often. We will be getting insane teams in the group stages because we are in the third seed. And the first two are always going to be huge teams. So it's not great. It's not great for us. It, we'll see how we can do to finish off the season. I need to do well. Otherwise, I am going to be getting fired. So I need to win the cup. I need to win the league title. And when we're talking about the cup, we have a game coming up right here against Hatay. And then in the league, we are first, luckily, with 49 points. Only one loss on our record. I still wonder if we're ever going to be having that one season where we don't lose any games in Turkey. That'd be amazing to see. But let's move on to the season finale. Can they win it? Yes, they do. Oh, my God. We're going to make it to the finals of the Europa League. Let's go. If we can beat Olympique Lyon. Finals in the Europa League, guys. Is this actually happening? Europa League finalists. Is this true? I don't quite know. I th No, we are not through. We actually bottled it there at the end. We have made it to the Turkish Cup final, but Olympique Lyon has actually kicked us out in the semi-finals. A huge L has been taken. We have a match in the Cup final against Karagümrük. That should be a dub, and it is. So we have won the league title. We have also... Won the Turkish Cup one more time. Another double has been achieved. But Olympique Lyon has just barely kicked us out, which is a huge, huge shame. Not happy with that. 106 points on us with how many losses this season? Just two. Bring that down to zero and I'll be happy. I want to go invincible, but Fener has been picking up master, the Mastership. What the hell? Meisterschaft. It's in German. So for whatever reason, I came up with Mastership, mastership in my head. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is we have won the league. Now, 
The team itself, Suarez, 89, Rossi, 92, Spinazzola, 90. Beautiful. Sangare has even gone up to the 84 rating. And uh, Kaviji is still on that 84. Now, it comes down to the spin of the wheel. What are we going to be getting? Are we going to get just as lucky as we have been? Or will it be a massive L? I hope, I desperately, desperately hope that we will not have a horrible spin of the wheel. Let's see it. Let's move on. And let's hope we get a decent one, please. Uh, Sweden? Sweden it is. Okay, Sweden we're going to go with. Let me show you here. Do they have 10 players above 80 potential? Is that a thing within this country? I would assume so. Yes. Yeah, I can deal with that. I can deal with that. We can do that. Let's jump in there. There's only a couple of really, really good ones, though. So we got to be careful. 12.3 million preseason and 51 million again. We got to do better in the Champions League to get more money into our team and into the budget. So now the question is, what is happening with the main players? Sweden does have some options, but they aren't the best. I'll be honest with you. We have a couple of players, one player in specific, Kulusevski, that will be very interesting for us. Berisha, 11 weeks to grow to an 86. That's not too bad. Now, Sangare is 29 years old. Issue is Sweden doesn't help us in this case. So we're going to be stuck with him for this season. Kaveji is also probably not going to get replaced. But a good thing is it only takes him four weeks to grow. So it's looking good for him. It's just one specific player that I'm thinking about right now. And that is Kulusevski. So we are going to go in there and we will search for Kulusevski. We will scout. Oh, we don't even have to scout him. But luckily, his contract is running out. This is our chance. We're going to get him into the team and turn him into center forward. That way, he'll be able to play up top alongside alongside the main man, Suarez, who is going to push towards that 90 rating this season. Kulusevski, player swap. Berisha, you have been nice to us. I appreciate you, but it's time to let you go. How about that swap deal? Are you interested? They are interested. It's a straight swap deal. Both players worth exactly the same nearly. So I am very happy that I don't have to put any money on top of this and we can save the rest of the money and spend it on possible backups from Sweden for our bench. So guys, a decision has been made. Pelkas obviously is not going to play up top and Kulusevski neither. The chat told me to put Rossi into center forward, which will keep him at the 92 rating. And we're going to move Kulusevski into that left midfield spot in which he actually gets a, a little bit of a plus one, according to Sofifa, but not right now for us. At least we're going to have him play on that left-hand side and a Rossi up top, two 90-plus rated strikers. That could possibly give us that boost to get into the next round in the Champions League. So I am looking forward to that. Good shot from the chat once again. Change of plans. Initially, I wanted to go for Larson, but we can't get him. Uh, his team is not willing to let him go. Isak is too expensive. And now our chat suggested to go for Ibra's regen. So we're going to go for Ibra's regen as a backup striker for our team. Hopefully he can grow fast enough. Uh, but this man is joining us immediately. So there he comes to the team. Simba joins in. And also Salai is back from his loan, which is great to see. Sanjust is on the reserves now. Salai has returned to Fener, an original player of the squad. If you guys do remember, Salai, could you play right back? No, nah, he can't. But it's okay. I was just wondering like, if we can build him up behind Sangare because Sangare is pushing up towards the older age, I should say. But uh, yeah, this guy is looking good. And sky's the limit for him. Simba Mufasa's son, as my chat just uh, mentioned a second ago. We're going to try and develop him, showing great potential. Seven weeks. All Gucci. He has all the pace in the world. It's not the best shooting. Another player that we're going to go for is, uh, is Matthias Svanberg, a very talented midfielder from Sweden, currently playing at Augsburg, as it seems, but we're going to get him for our bench. So here is our transfer window. Kulusevski coming in for a swap deal for Berisha. Svanberg coming in for 49.5 million, which is insane, by the way. Can't believe I had to pay that for him. Simba, 5 mil. But these were genuinely the only options that would fit into our squad. Swanberg coming in as a backup. I have no idea what his rating is, though. How high is he rated? 81, and I had to pay that much for him. 
but we needed it. We needed it. We now have two midfield, central midfield options. We have Cadolo for the wings. We have Sanjust and Salah for the center back positions. Munoz, who can probably cover a right back and left back. Simba coming in as a backup for the striker position. So we are set up for the season. Season four halfway, lads. And Champions League, Atletico Madrid. As you guys know, Atletico Madrid is one of the toughest teams to play against. They're going to smash us. Now, in the starting lineup, you see a Rossi still with the exclamation mark. It used to say it's going to take him about four weeks or five weeks left to turn into a center forward. And then he just said, you know what? No. And it went up to 55 as he grew to a 93. So I don't know what I'm going to do there. I am a bit confused about that situation. I might actually just pop him back over here and turn Kulusevski into a, into a center forward just so we don't have any issues with the formation itself. Um, Kaveji has done well here. Sensi has gone up to an 87, which I'm happy with. Bergwijn with the 80, uh, with the 91. Sangare stuck. So ideally, the next team that we get, the next nation that we get is a good one because Sweden, not necessarily amazing in that sense. Kulusevski is obviously great, but um, I think Berisha would have gotten to that rating as well. And Swanberg is a good backup, though. I'm happy with that. But it hasn't necessarily improved our team massively. The team itself has just improved in their rating. So that's a good thing. And uh, hopefully that will carry us far in the Champions League. Now, in the league itself, I don't think anyone doubts this, but I can show you here one more time. 49 points, just four points ahead. We had a bad start, though, into the season. Definitely not going unbeaten this time around. So uh, don't be shocked there. When it comes to goals... These are the lads. Four people with more than 10 goals. Let's get to the end of the season and see if this team somehow get, get it, can get far in the Champions League. Wow. Oh my god, mate. This is... This is quite interesting. I can't believe I'm seeing what I'm seeing. But this team has just beaten Real Madrid in the quarterfinals. And it has beaten Atletico Madrid before that. What is actually going on? We are going through against Manchester City now in the Champions League as we approach the end of Season 4. Definitely did not expect this to happen, but we're going to see if this team can actually pull it off. Oh my. 3-1 against Man City. And then 2-1 loss. We're in the Champions League final. What are you... T nah, man. Come on. This is a joke. This is actually making me very angry right now. You know why? I spend years and years and years trying to rebuild these teams. Seasons after seasons after seasons. Sometimes I have teams with all 90 plus rated players. I'm not even joking. Like only one player below 90. And they can't win it. So you're telling me I go to Turkey... Right? I go to Turkey, I pick up Fener, I give myself the challenge of going for players from not one nation only every single season with the spin the wheel, and I build some mixed up team, and somehow this team has the cheat code in beating some of the biggest clubs with some of the most insane players. I am shocked. How did they pull this off? Look at my bench! I have a 72 and a 76. How did they do this? <laughs> I am actually angry. I should be happy for being at the, at the final of the Champions League. But I'm genuinely angry. <laughs> I can't believe this is happening in Season 4. We're going to play the Champions League final. And this might just be the end of the rebuild. I cannot believe this is happening. We are going to win the league. We are going to win the Turkish Cup. Probably against Gala. I would assume we're going to win that one. And we're going to play against Barcelona. And I don't even have an actual center forward here. This is the center forward position. Rossi has been playing there as the left wing all this time. Kulusevski have been trying to become a, uh, to change to a center forward. Maybe it's the 4-4-2? It's the 4-4-2 flat for anyone wondering. Maybe it's that. I have no clue why this has happened. I have an 85 rated Sangare that's 29 years old. Or maybe it's just Spinazzola carrying this team. I don't know what it is. It's incredible. We're going to jump into the Champions League final right now. This video was not supposed to be this short, but I guess 
it is what it is now. But I am playing an ultimate difficulty now. It's not legendary anymore. So uh, maybe I'll bottle it. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe I will bottle it, chat. Maybe this might be the first time we will have to do the rebuild. After the Champions League final being played, we have to do another season. We never had that before. So my chat and I have just decided that I'm going to be playing this fully. So here it goes. Playing with my old team. It's so weird though, by the way. Back in the day when I used to support this squad. Um, around that time, we had a, a lot of Brazilians in the team. I used to absolutely love them. And one specific player in the name of Alex de Souza was the reason as to why I became a fan of this club. And he was incredible. Such a good player. Kaviji. Oh, he's left-footed. I thought he was right-footed. That would have been a goal for us. But yeah, Alex de Souza, if anyone knows him, in the comments down below, he was absolutely goated. And then we had that 2007 Champions League season where they beat Chelsea. Um, it was such a good season. And we had such incredible goals in that year as well. I am pretty sure that the best goal of that Champions League season belonged to Fener's David, David de Souza. Um, he was incredible as well. He had like a long shot fly into the top left corner from like 40 yards out. I'm not even kidding. Um, oh, 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 oh. Okay, now that, my friends, was not ideal. That was not ideal. Maybe it might just be the first time we actually lose a Champions League final in a rebuild. This would be a first. Ooh, no, Davinson. You can't be doing that to me, Davinson, man. It's 2-0. Oh, no. So it's the fastest way to make it to the Champions League final, but it's also going to be us bottling it. Go on, Suarez. Pass it back, mate. Great turn. Kulusevski gets in. We're back. Woo! 53rd minute. The Swedish lad gets it done. Down that left-hand side. He cuts inside to help Suarez. And we are back in the mix for the Champions League final. This is definitely the toughest Champions League final we've had so far in any rebuild. No way they found that pass. That's incredible. We are done. That's it. We're done. 3-1. Barcelona wins it. Barcelona wins the Champions League final. It was too early, in fact. I knew it. Maybe one last chance. No, they're going to have the last one. They're going to have the last one. That's us done. That is us done. We have lost the Champions League final, boys. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it was, in fact, way too early. The rebuild continues. Oh, my. How did that just happen? Well, here comes season five. We did win the cup, by the way. So it's another double, but no triple. Treble, I should say, not triple. <laughs> to the next country, please. I need something somewhat decent. Somewhat decent. Morocco. Morocco has... Ooh. Morocco is actually eligible. Okay. So after Sweden, it's Morocco. Let's see how this goes. 74 million in the transfer budget this time around. And here comes the question. Is Kulusevski finally able to change and become a center forward? Or are we still going to have to wait? There we go. He can finally become whatever he needs to be. 16 weeks. So maybe now the team is going to do better or worse. I mean, we have gotten to the Champions League final. So it doesn't really matter in that sense. But uh, Rossi is now back playing in his original position. Kulusevski up top with Suarez. Morocco, there's only a couple of players, really. But Hakimi is definitely the one that we have to go for, for the right back position. That is the ideal solution for us uh, to go for. Now, the question is, though, we will have enough money for that deal because I am pretty sure Hakimi is 88 rated right now. And that is, ooh, his contract is expiring. There might be hope. So here are the deals that we have gone for. Sangare has left the team for 47.3 million. And we have brought in Hakimi for 95 million into the squad. He's worth 101. Uh, let me actually see. Has he gone up in his value after his uh, signature with us? Uh, he's gone up a little bit. That's good. And now what we're going to do... Oh, no, no. That's not what I wanted to do. What we're going to do is we're going to turn him into a right wing back. 
Oh, don't tell me it's going to take 59 weeks, please. Uh, oh, no. Why? Why? Why is it taking him 59 weeks? Anyways, he is going to play right back for us now. Uh, but I'm assuming it's going to be Munoz playing now because he is the actual right back. So that's great. Halfway through the season, this time in February, I forgot to do the season roundup, lads. Uh, we are now first in the league, which is obviously great. Uh, in the Champions League, we are up against Bayern Munich. So that's a huge battle that is coming up. I don't know if this is, is this if this team can pull off getting into the Champions League final back to back, but I surely do wish it can happen. Now, we had to make Hakimi captain so that he actually plays the games, by the way. If you guys have issues playing certain players, maybe making them captain fixes your issue. At least that's our experience so far uh, because Munoz has been playing ahead of him and that is obviously not what we want for that position. We want that higher rated player and it takes him too long to become a right back, so we're still waiting. But the team is looking better than last season. I'm happy with the growth. Kulusevski up to an 89 as a center forward. I do think with Kulusevski up top at striker, we're going to have a better performance if we can make it to the Champions League final this time. Here it goes. Semi-finals in the Champions League. One more time. We're up against Dortmund. We have won the first game 1-0. And the second one is going to be 2-2. We're through into the final one more time. Two seasons back to back. Just like Liverpool. First time failed against Real Madrid. Obviously, they did because of... Uh, not because of, but, you know, Carlos, Salah, his shoulder and all that stuff. But now we are here and we are ready to go. 93 points in a league. No one really cares about that, do you? Here it is in May in the final Atletico Madrid. Bro, the amount of times I've played against Atletico Madrid in the final in the rebuilds is actually incredible. Let's see if we can beat that squad. Atletico, obviously very, very strong. We have won the Turkish Cup. We have won the Turkish League. And now this is the team that's going to take Atletico on and hopefully get it done this time around. Suarez, 93. Kulusevski, 90. Bagvine, 94. Rossi, 95. Spinazzola, 32 years old, 94 rated. Mancini with the 91. Sanchez has gone up nicely. Hakimi it has come in with the 88 and then now grew, grew plus one. And the goalkeeper has been incredible, by the way. Uh, but this time, I, I just can't lose it. There is absolutely no way we lose this one more time. I am going to play a little bit more defensive this time around. Last time, we were way too attacking. And we're going to go fast build up, counter-attacking football. Let's get it. Into the center, Kulusevski, Kaveji. I, I, I despise him. I absolutely despise him. I have to be honest, I do not like Kaveji. He has been an issue in this team. Oh, I'm so angry. I'm so freaking angry, bro. Joao Felix, of course. Who else? Who else, man? Who else? I want to smash my head against the desk. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, Suarez. Bang. I cannot believe what I've just seen. Oh, Kaveji. Kaveji is trying. I mean, who's helping him? Who the hell is helping him? There we go. We got an option. There we go. Please, please. Yes. Play it inside. Turn. Shoot. Yes. Come on. Was that act? Who was that? Who the hell was that? Rossi. Get in. Oh my God. This is the most intense Champions League final now. Oh yes, baby. Get in. We got lucky. We got a bit lucky there, but I'll take it. 1-1. 39th minute. We're back. Can we get two? Can we get two? Come on, Suarez. What a ball. Kulusevski. Yes! Let's go. Get in. Suarez can't finish, but he can assist. Yes. Come on. Incredible pass from Suarez. And what a finish. What a finish from Kulusevski. Beautiful. Oblak threw himself down. That was not good enough, Oblak. You need to do better there. He needed to come out for that one and probably put a little bit more pressure on Kulu. But what a turnaround this is, boys. Incredible. Fener might actually do it at the second try. And you know what? It all started with Kaveji stealing the ball. I'm not even kidding. Could we get three before halftime? Kulu. Oh, yes. Come on. 
Let's go! Yes! Yes, mate! <laughs> Never expected this to happen. What a turnaround. Unbelievable. 3-1 it is. Yes, this is the Champions League trophy. Wow, this rebuild is actually special. You love to see it. And there goes the counter. This is it. This is it now. Backvine running down the wing. He has options down the middle. He's going to go by himself. And he's going to look for the man in the middle. Another pass. And there is. That was Kaviji again. I, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice because he actually did something good for the second and the third goal. So I'm going to be nice to him. Oh, Kaviji. Right foot. Five star weak foot. No, nope, he's still trash. This gives me more opportunities to run through exactly like that. Kulusevsky. Suarez, ole, Rabona golasso. That's it, mate. We have won the Champions League with Fener. Can't believe we've done it, boys. I can't believe we've done it in five seasons as well. We've had two Champions League finals. That is unheard of. We never actually get that done. But for whatever reason, this formation and this team, despite having players playing out of position like Hakimi, they are getting it done. And it's really surprising to see. There goes Sensi. Sensi, can you see that pass? Oh, yes, he does. Let's go. And here goes now Rossi. Six, six, no, five, sorry. But now that I said six, I want six. You thought you beat me, Atletico. Get out of here, man. Get out of here. Rossi. Suarez. Last attack of the game. Bang. Suarez. No, ref. I was about to score the sixth. I said six. Give me the six. Anyways, Fener, for the first time in their history, have won the Champions League thanks to us and the wheel helping us out along the way as well. Let's see that trophy lifted. There it is. Hakimi, the man who was forced to be captain, is going to lift it for us in the end. Fener Bosche has pulled it off. Saru, Najwert, champion, Fener. There we go, lads. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. Have a great day. It was nice to go to Turkey. And it was actually nice that this rebuild is actually very unique. Not just with the spin the wheel, but also with the fact that we had two Champions League finals in this one. I hope you enjoyed it because I surely did. Even though it was aggravating at certain points, it was great now at the end. Have a great day, guys. Let me know in the comments down below which rebuild you want to see next. And follow your boy on Instagram and subscribe if you are new. Take care and peace.